Is your business struggling to stand out from the crowd online? At Webamax, we specialize in turning clicks into customers. From SEO and PPC to social media management and stunning web design, we've got you covered. Boost your online presence and drive real results. Ready to take your business to the next level? Visit webamax.com. That's W-E-B-I-M-A-X.com for a free digital analysis. Roll the web with webamax.com. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary, full work limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome to another edition of Rams Up Roundtable. I'm your host, Tom, at Rams Beat on X. Today, joined by my co-host on the Rams Up podcast, Mark. How you doing, Mark? Back Pretty from good. your uh, vacation, back from your cruise. Yeah, two vacations, one on a cruise and another uh, 10 days with my grandson while my uh, daughter took off on a trip of their own. So, yeah, it's been a while. Nice, nice. And also uh, joined by regular Ian. What's up, Ian? Doing good, gentlemen. I mean, damn, it's getting hot out here in L.A. That's how you know football season's upon us, right? Ooh. When the heat comes in, for anyone who played, when the heat starts to settle in and you have summer camp, whether your, your your Pop Warner youth football days or high school days, your college days, or if anyone here played in the pros, you know, football time is around the corner where, where stuff's getting serious. So that's my uh, that's my weather cue for Rams footballs around the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's heating up and right, right when it starts yeah. to cool down. So good stuff. Well, let's dive right in here. We got some topics here to discuss. Let's mm-hmm. let's start with the uh, the NFL films version of the uh, documentary that um, you know kind of looked at the Rams and uh, and a couple other teams, I think, right? Um, yeah, the for, pick is in uh, is what it's called, my yeah, friend. The I pick is say, in, yeah. right. The NFL yeah. films, the pick is in on Roku yeah. Channel. And so, uh, but notably, they talked a lot more about the Rams wanting to trade up and uh, then the, you know, sort of the Rams documentary did. Um, and so, you know, Ian, you were saying, well, why don't you describe the, the scene for the listeners? Yeah, so it's it's extremely similar to the in-house behind the grind that we do that we discussed as well last pod. And it, it, our, our people do a great job. But, you know, let's just be real about it. It is a bias towards our liking, Rams, and positivity, <laughs> right? Things that probably 
you know, we would like to hear and see, you know, maybe ownership, well, not maybe, for sure, ownership, Demoff, Kroenke, and whoever else is like, okay, let's take that out, let's take that out, let's take that out. Now, with NFL Films, they follow a similar structure of having to listen to the team, but they get more leeway of like, hey, they're going to fight harder to leave stuff in. So, in this episode, it is now a 100% fact that the Rams tried to trade up Not only for tight end Brock Bowers from Georgia, but for defensive tackle Byron Murphy from Texas. Names were dropped by our coach. Names were dropped by our GMS need and personnel. It was a fact that we tried to get one or the other. And let's need at the beginning of this before the trade calls that were really interesting to watch, you know, were unfolding. Let's need said, quote, if we get Bowers, if we get Murphy verse or even Fisk, it'll be a successful draft. So we got two out of the four he named, and that's Rams fans. You should feel great about that. Again, Les Need said, if we get Bowers, Murphy, Verse, or Fisk, we should feel good. And we got two out of that four. Fantastic. So, you know, Jets were getting offers from us, right? right? We were going to jump to number 10 overall, and they were going to get our 19th and that 52. And they said, no thanks, <laughs> right, multiple times. And then it was like, all right, that's not happening. We called the Raiders when before they had picked Bowers. And we said, hey, we'll give you our, uh, you know, our 19th, our 122. And I think something else I'm blanking on. And they were like, no, thanks. We're going to take Bowers. And then that fell through. And obviously, Sean McVay, if you guys could watch that Roku channel and wherever else you can find that episode, he was not happy. He was like, son of a gun on his face. He really wanted him. He really, really wanted Brock Bowers to tie it in. So they pivoted their attention to all-world D-tackle Byron Murphy College, you know, from Texas. And McVay said, hey, let's be reasonable, quote, but try and go up and get Murphy. I would try to get this guy less. He makes a huge difference to me, and I don't think he's going to get past 16. So I'm not saying to be reckless, but he's going to be better than anyone else in this draft probably at around that selection so Snead says don't worry we'll figure it out so the Rams called the Colts thinking that they were going to take him but they ended up taking a lot of two lot two and they said hey we'll give you the 19th 99th and 154 overall picks Colts said nah we like lot two too much we're taking him and then right after that then you see Byron Murphy go to the Seattle Seahawks and Sean was pissy in a pissy mode <laughs> and you can see it on his face if you watch that episode He's like, son of a gun, the two guys I really wanted, we couldn't get. You know, but Sean rightfully said, hey, let's sit tight and see how this thing flows from here on out, you know. And verse fell to them, and that's where we went on that. But, again, long story short, is no longer speculation. Rams wanted Bowers badly, but they also wanted Byron Murphy pretty bad, too. I mean, what do you think, gentlemen? Shoot. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, of course, you know, Murphy going in division didn't never uh... – didn't help either, right? So, um, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think it's interesting. I mean, I'm happy with how it came out. Me too. Um, and uh, I mean, would you rather Murphy or Fisk? I mean, obviously Murphy, you know, is the the, the bigger blue chip. But I'm kind of glad we didn't go with Bowers. I mean, I really am. I think tight end. I mean, I just I just like those first two picks going up. You know, really shoring up our defense. I mean, we got enough. I agree with you, man. And, yeah. And, you know, we got Parkinson. I, all, I just, I don't know. I'm glad. Yeah, we, we're invested in that tight end position. I mean, yeah. right, gentlemen? It, it, that would have yeah. been like, a, oh, we just played Colby. We have Davis Allen, who was a pretty solid rookie. And, right. And then Higby, well, he's still under Higby. contract. It would have been messy. It would have been messy. Yeah. And I would have, now, we all would have been like, it could work. It's going to be so cool. But then it's like, what are we doing with the tight ends? But, like, so it, it worked out better. I agree with it. What about you, Mark? I mean, that's pretty crazy to hear, man. Well, I was I was really doubting that the Rams were interested in trading up for Bowers. Didn't make any sense to me either. And then my my uh, my special assistant he said, you know what? How sweet would it have been to have Cup Puka, uh, Puka and Bowers, assuming Bowers is all that he's made out to be. But that okay. said, um, I, I th- remember we would have given up a couple of our draft picks that really solidified our roster. I think so. Overall, I'm happy too. Um, one question, one point, I thought I heard them say, and I talked about this on one of the podcasts, I thought McVeigh said he wanted to get two of six players. 
And I don't know who the other two are. I never figured that out. So if either of you know, I, I should please share it. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, we know who the four were. But yeah, I'm happy with the way yeah. it turned out. I, I think, you know, adding, you know, two extra, not getting Bowers, but adding two extra guys, not getting Murphy, but adding two extra draft picks. Uh, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, me too. I mean, and and Sean said, if we can't get Versa 19, let's trade back less. So it was either Versa or we were going to accumulate more draft picks. I mean, so I think things worked out greatly. Let me shoot. That's the way yeah, the NFL and- goes, man. Think about this, too. Think about the trade, how it didn't go down for McCaffrey back in 2022 and how different things will look at then. You know, we got denied. And then think about the – in that same season, the big trade we were going to make for – Oh my gosh, Brian Burns! I was blanking on his name Burns, right now, and now that yeah. got rejected. Uh, sometimes the moves that you don't make end up working out much better. I mean, think about the timeline we would be on right now if the one or both those trades happened. <laughs> oh man, the Burns one. Oh man, that would have been a disaster. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, and that that might have been just you know, trying to get Aaron Donald help, like he's, you know, he talks about it and people talk about yeah. it, you know, AD, he's thinking about retiring. We got to get him some help. He'll stick around, you know? So whatever you pick for whatever, whatever picks you gave up for Burns, you were really picking, you're really trading for Burns and Donald, right? Which, you know, well, I, that <laughs> I guess, I guess, uh, I guess that would have been worth it, right? For two or yeah. three more years. But anyway, yeah. um, it's cool. Yeah, I'll so, take these two outside linebackers in my background. That's fine with me right now. Young absolutely. and oh, inexpensive. I'm so, <laughs> so, I'm so yeah. excited. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, one of the things, though, though, you know, is about the tight ends. All of a sudden, the Rams just have this, you know, interest in tight ends um, all of a sudden. And uh, if, you know, so we were talking about uh, next topic, the pistol and the usage of, and, you know, with the tight ends are so critical in the, in the uh in the pistol because it gives you that extra blocker but they can when you want to pass out of it you can also uh you know you can also throw you know, if they can if they can catch if they're not just blocking tight ends so obviously you know higby has always been solid in that area he's hurt right now um recovering and um and uh davis is good and you know parkinson yep. so we got our guys right and so that, that you know that you can understand why he may have been wanting the the bowers you know, in there as well, because um, we might go with a lot of uh, two tight end sets, right? We could even go two tight ends, two running backs, you know, 22, yeah. 12, 21. And what, we I would like to see it, it. Mix it all up, right? And then, yeah. but all of that is predicated on continuing to have success in the pistol, which after the buy last year, it was all in on the pistol, by far the most snaps in the second half of the season in Thank the God. pistol. Um, and it worked great. And that's one of the reasons, uh, you know, running those, those gap schemes, those duo, a mix of that and some outside zone that McVay's always run. And it just worked great. I mean, Kyron had a, a stellar second half. And, yeah. and so anyway, I just want to talk a little bit about the pistol. Ian, why don't you describe what it is, how it works, the pros and cons of it, and then, you know, get into what we think is going to happen this year. Yeah. And real quick to everyone out there who, it's unfamiliar with a lot of football terms. Don't worry. There'll be a nice video on my end and, and our friends here uh, all at the Rams Up podcast. We'll be going through the basics with you before football season starts so everyone is well-equipped and aware of all the little cool Rams nuances with scheme and formations, both offense and defense. So with the pistol formation, what is that? It is a shotgun-oriented offensive formation. Now, you have traditional shotgun, which means the quarterback is receiving the height snap ball, not under center, but, you know, three to five yards away from the center where the ball is traveling through the air to get into the quarterback's hands. That is what a shotgun uh, snap and shotgun formation is quick and easy. So now, usually the running back is lined up on the left hip or the right hip of the quarterback in a regular shotgun formation, no matter where the receiver and tight ends are. Usually that's how it is. Running backs either left or right of the quarterback by his hip. Now in the pistol, quarterback is still in shotgun, taking that ball through the air from the center. But the running back is lined up directly behind the quarterback, just like it would be if the quarterback was under center getting the snap. 
And why that is so fantastic is the main reason is the defense can't tee off on what the running back is going to do. And the defense can't tee off on like, oh, the Rams are only going to run this amount or these specific plays because the running back is lined up on his left side of Stafford or his right side of Stafford. Right. Think about it. If you are a running back and you're getting a handoff from Stafford out of the shotgun, traditional left or right, you can only go the opposite way that you are. Now, there's some counter runs you could do, but it's limited. If you're lined up behind Stafford and the quarterback, you can run and do every single run play you do, like if you were under center taking the snap. So that's the main benefit. And we've talked about this a bunch when the Rams were having woes in that first part of the season this last year. And we hammered the table here at the round table saying, why are we not running more pistol? Because Stafford loves shotgun. He's best when he's able to survey the defense immediately where he doesn't have to do this big seven step drop out of shotgun, right? To do a long developing pass play. He can get the ball immediately and survey the field ASAP. Now we still want to run the ball because Kyron was great. Our line was blocking well. And it was like, hey, how can we blend the two together? How can we do our same run offense, but also make Stafford as comfortable as possible out of the, you know, out of a passing formation where he kills it? Well, let's run that dang pistol. And that's what Sean McVay, maybe he tuned in this pod. Maybe somebody heard here <laughs> because we were adamant on this pod for them to run the pistol. And then they started doing it, like you said, my friend, after the bye week. Kyron was explosive. It was phenomenal. I was so dang happy to see that. And based off reports, it seems like that's going to be a base formation that we're going to run this upcoming season, which if it was any other way, I would be upset because you invest in the big boys on the O-line. You're trying to keep Stafford healthy. You're trying to run the football with an all-pro running back in Kyron. You're trying to run the football with an all-American Blake Corum from Michigan. And how do you do that? Let's just stay in that damn pistol and keep defenses guessing. Is it run? Is it pass? You don't know till the ball is snapped. And that's the beauty of the pistol and why I love it so much. And, and it also makes the play action more effective, right? Oh, yeah. As in out mean, of the shotgun, it's almost a non-factor. The whole Sean McVay gap skin offense is available out of the pistol. Everything. You can run anything you want. All the shotgun plays, all the under center run plays, everything can be done out of the pistol. That is the beauty of it. And I'm yeah. happy that we made that switch. Yeah, and like you said, Mark, you can you can still do play action or, or you know essentially fake handoff, right? And but you can do it under, under center when you do it. The quarterback, first of all, dropping back has to turn his head, and that's a major problem for quarterbacks like um, our old quarterback. Um, <laughs> it was tough to pick up. Stafford didn't like doing it either. He liked he liked the uh, he like you said he, he likes to survey the field. And, not take his eyes off what everybody's doing. But yeah. so, but out of the pistol, you can just turn and 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 do the the uh you know the play out the fake essentially, yeah. um fake handoff while you're still surveying. And that also opens up the um the opportunity for read option plays, right? Okay, am I gonna hand it off or am I not gonna hand it off? Depending and and you could you know you guys like Lamar Jackson and stuff do it. Their run, their their read option is: Am I going to run it or am I going to give it to this guy? Or you know, yeah. but Stafford doesn't have that opportunity. But he can definitely pull the ball back and then and then run to the pass play. So for a guy like McVay, I mean, I'm sure I'm actually surprised we didn't see this sooner. Um, uh, maybe, I know, I don't know, but but I mean, I feel like I feel like gentlemen before this season, I don't feel like we ever had ran it at all ever. Am I wrong on that? I'm just trying to I, just think through the games and. I don't think we saw pistol once before. What do you say after the buy? I think yeah. uh, that's correct. Was it that Arizona game here at home? That was the first time we started to see it. Is that is that I don't correct know. It on was, my memory? It was just yeah, it feels it was, like that. But we were three and six by, and then all of a sudden it was just you know here we go. Yeah, seven and and, and worth noting, uh, and a shout out to AJ Schulte, his article. Uh, yeah. The Rams had very sneakily perhaps hired two coaches with extensive pistol experience on the offensive side of the ball and Blake Corum uh, apparently ran a high percentage of his uh, plays out of the pistol as well. So there may be a, a plan going on here to definitely lean on the pistol more. Yeah, Please. I think so. Yeah, with that. Please, Coach this. McVay. Please, if anyone tunes in from the Rams, just please run the pistol as much as humanly possible. 
please. <laughs> it's, it'll benefit us greatly. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Speaking that. of McVay, uh, I mean, there's, you know, the, the word on the out of camp is and, and so forth is that he's just, and he's even said he just feels rejuvenated. You know, it's like it's, he's, he just has this, you know, it was a rough couple of years, all the stuff that's going through personally with, you know, on the, on the upside with the kid, and, and which is fantastic. But it also does change things a little bit, you know, in terms of, of being a workaholic head coach, you know, yeah. and uh, and then the stress of that down season after the Super Bowl and and then his wife and their family having the, the ties in Ukraine. And so just a lot of, a lot going on. And um, but yeah, so he's you know rejuvenated. I mean, is that what's your take on that, Mark? Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, I heard one comment, you know, he he basically acknowledged that he may have been in the doldrums there a couple of years ago. And I think his comment, what was I thinking? And, uh, you know, it probably a, a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that they've, you know, added so many young players over the last two years, guys yeah. that I mean, you know, it, he's not surrounded by veteran players anymore. It's a bunch of young, hungry guys. And that's got to help. That's got to help his disposition and his you know, his excitement coming to work every day, uh, coaching up a bunch of young guys, right? Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, believe it by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you want to get mixed up in the family business. Introducing. The Godfather at ChompaCasino.com. Test your luck in the shadowy world of the Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play the Godfather now at ChompaCasino.com. Welcome to the family. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I mean, it has to that... I'm sure, you know, the new addition to the coaching staff, right? There is always new faces Sean is uh, having to work with. So I'm sure maybe that's, you know, been a uh, a rejuvenating thing outside of the young players. But, you know, man, sometimes, I mean, we all do this as human beings, right, gentlemen? I mean, let's just be real for a second. Sometimes the destination, the goal, we're tunnel vision on that, right? And Sean would, has described that too about the Super Bowl winning the damn Super Bowl was the goal that he, you know, he lost his way on the journey. He didn't enjoy the journey, or he wasn't so immersed in that journey—the good, the bad, the great, the ugly. And when the goal, winning a championship, or the goal in any of our lives, when that's the only thing, then is it as fulfilling once you get it? And for Sean, it wasn't. 
And that's why it was a crash and burn in 2022, you know, and part of, I'm sure there's some other things going on, but from, from my eyes, that was the main thing. So, you know, he talked about having a young child, young players, new coaches. I mean, he has a better perspective about coaching and he's happy about it. And he says, man, it feels like you're one again. Quote. <laughs> thank, thank God. Hey, give us another seven. And uh, I mean, shoot, I think he said as well in that little interview, he's like, I guess you guys are going to have to drag me out of here. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I hope that's the case. I hope it's a bill about that. We're going to have to kick you out for you to leave. That's what we don't want here. Hey, <laughs> right, Sean. And uh, I, I'm happy to hear that. And uh, gosh, Sean McVay is the best thing to happen to Rams football, no matter the city, no matter the era, I think in the history of this, uh, in this program, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, the athletic football show did a, uh, they did these, you know, all the off season content that these big podcasts yeah. have to do. And they, so they did like a, well, we're going to draft quarterbacks and we're going to draft, you know, these different player positions. And then, you know, and they have two or three people going through it, you know, yeah. and then talking about it and why and whatnot. And they did a, uh, head coach draft and, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, it was great. But, uh, McVay got picked first. Uh, ahead uh-huh. of, yeah. Now, to be fair, the guest was uh, the guest was Jordan Rodriguez, and she went oh, first. Well, but well, she yeah. said she would have done it anyway, even though. But you know, she has a unique perspective in terms of you know covering him and had so much access to him. But she just thinks yeah. that um, you know. And then the other guy would uh, thought Andy Reid, but McVay would have been second to Andy Reid, right? Which is still yeah. not exactly chopped liver. So, nope, another yeah, Hall of Fame coach. That's cool yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah, he's thought of so highly around the league. And then I just, you know, heard some other guys talking um, and about uh, on a pod today, actually, that uh, mm-hmm. talking about Kyle Shanahan and where would you rank, where would you draft um, Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay? Those were the two guys they were really talking about. If you were doing a draft of this year's draft, and at what what pick would one of those guys go in if they were available? And these guys were saying right around number ten, it'd be ten quarterbacks, you know, or, you know, those top player positions, and then those guys would be, you know, top of the, you know, middle top of the first round. That's Probably, how big of yeah. a difference they make. So, yeah, um, so yeah, and then you know, obviously McDaniel's highly thought of, but all those guys that came out of that whole, you know, that whole Shanahan group and um, Gruden group, uh, McVay is just yeah, so. But McVay's, you know, he's great, but he's very emotional, right? And if he kind of wears it on his sleeve, and if he's not clicking, he's gonna, it's, everyone's gonna kind of know it, you know. <laughs> I know it's 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 a yin and yang of it, ain't it? Shoot. Yeah, yeah. his body language on the sideline uh, during that one sad season w- was pretty evident. He looked like he didn't want to be there, and that's what got everybody started up about this retirement talk. I think. Yeah, I mean, didn't he turned over in that Packer game that year? He he. he Turned over uh, play calling duties. It's crazy. And he, he didn't call the plays. So it's kind of nuts. McVeigh not calling plays, right? Anyway, well, good news is all that's in the past. We have a rejuvenated Sean McVeigh, a bunch of young good. guys that he's coaching up and uh, and super excited. So uh, so let's get out of here on some quick quick outs. We're going to call them the quick outs. Um, nice. 20, 2028 uh, preseason games, Ian. Are oh, yeah. going to be played where? You know what? I have no idea. I hope that would be pretty cool if it was a Coliseum, <laughs> right? I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't be an option. And maybe that probably – actually, I'm thinking about it as I say it. That probably won't be the case because in 2028, guys, we have the Olympics coming to Los Angeles. So SoFi Stadium is going to be occupied, I think, with a mega pool. Or they're using it yeah. for something incredible. And a majority of L- the L.A. area um, out here in Southern California is going to be – you know, uh, occupied. So maybe I said the Coliseum, that's probably not going to have, they're probably going to do track and field there. Let's be honest. So who knows where that's going to be, but, uh, 2028, no home preseason games. And I know people are like, Oh, what? I can't believe it, but it's not the end of the world. As long as regular season games are not interfered with, which that's a coin flip, who knows how that's going to turn out. We hopefully the schedule gets figured out by then. Uh, but, It'll be cool to see them at the Coliseum. But again, like I said, there's probably going to be track and field there. But, I mean, Rams Nation, let us know 
if you're watching on YouTube or email us, what, what do you think they should play in the comments or through that through our email? Because I'm curious. I, I want to hear some good suggestions. What about you, gentlemen? Well, for 2028, no preseason games at home. I don't think that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I suspect they'll play at Oakland, uh, at, at at the Chargers. Well, the Char- they can't play at the Chargers. That's gonna that's gonna present the same problem for the Chargers, I assume, huh? Yeah, uh, they'll they'll find some short short uh, distance uh, preseason games all on the road is what my guess would be, mm-hmm. or you know I don't yeah I don't know I haven't really thought about it but I I'm not too worried about it you know how the Rams treat preseason uh, they'd just as soon not even show up probably yeah we might only have two preseason games by then anyway oh yeah, that's right 18's upon us isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah 18 is upon us for sure yeah so uh, okay so I I agree. Uh, not not a uh, not a big deal at all. Uh, and training camp. Speaking of dates, training camp dates are announced. Ian, what are those training camp dates that fans are allowed into uh, LMU to to see their Rams? Yeah. So at the end of July, so after everyone parties on the fourth and everyone has their couple weeks to recover from a hot summer of fireworks. <laughs> so July twenty fifth through July, uh, actually, excuse me, July twenty fifth through august 1st and there's like a little break and then they're back for august 3rd so i want to say there's a couple days that are sprinkled in that that are uh for season ticket members only if i'm not mistaken so that might be that august 2nd date and maybe another one i'm just not uh, i'm blanking out on but you know hey man for for a good a week and a half stretch pretty much you're gonna have those open practices now if you go on the rams website or if you go on to the Rams app, if anyone has that downloaded, I do as well. It's very informative. You can see the map of how they're going to have it laid out, all the events, where the practice field is going to be. And, man, that place, it, to me, is going to be jam-packed because, you know, I, obviously, uh, our, you know, gentlemen, you can go into detail about the university. You've been on campus more than I have. I mean, for a professional training camp, it's going to be crammed there. <laughs> it's going to be crammed. And based off that map, there's not going to be two fields of practice room like it was at UC Irvine or where it is, what is the standard at any NFL facility where there's two separate 100-yard football fields. It's only one. So, I mean, seating area, practice area, is going to be a slammed event out there by the beach by LAX. So, I'm excited. I'm, I, hopefully, we can all get together for that. Maybe we do an episode out there. That'd be fun. That'd be fun, but, yeah. uh, uh, everyone, you know, if you're not too sure on a date, I'd say figure it out ASAP. Once those tickets, you know, those free tickets are available for you and pick a day because it's going to be slammed no matter the day you choose. So, yeah, say, I think, yeah, I think Paul is planning on coming out, Paul Walia. Yeah. So we should probably let, probably let him pick a date and uh, us converge on that date cool. if we can. Uh, I'll definitely show up if, if you guys are there and Paul's there. I'll, I'll the only there's there's a two or three days I that are um, off my calendar. I'll let you know offline. But other than that, yeah, let's do it. Yes. That's great. Looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Uh, so some uh, quick uh, injury slash health updates. Um, so Cooper, you know, all reports are that Cooper Cup, right? He's been having this. You know, McVay said that his injuries were a lot worse than over the last couple of seasons than they let on, that he let on, like he powered through it, and he just wasn't, you know, just couldn't be, wasn't even close to 100, you know, his, I don't know what, they didn't put a percentage, but he was banged yeah. up a lot. And, yeah. um, you know, you could tell, right, when he was, he'd, he'd go out there, oh, he's healthy, he's playing, and then the next, yeah, thing, you right. know, next thing you know, he's limping around. He didn't even get, you know, on some something that looked pretty negligible, so... Yeah, he was banged up, but the good news is all reports are that he's back to 100, the old Cooper Cup, and it's showing at mini camp, and he's super excited. And and boy, a uh, you know a 2021 version of Cooper Cup and a oh, um, please <laughs> and uh, and Puka Nakua, and you know oh man, so uh, and then uh, Kyron, I guess really hasn't been much news on him. He's just kind of kind of you know. Re- recovering a little bit from his foot and then um and then trey white how's he doing you yeah i mean sean says he's making good progress so evaluate him you know i guess that week before training camp starts and see if he'll be clear to you know have be a major participant if not full so that's good i mean he's the wild card any gentleman 
Like if he returns to Pro Bowl or All Pro level performance, which he has been before the, you know, severe ACL, before the severe Achilles injuries and back to back seasons. I mean, gosh, that's just crappy for any any athlete, any person really. You know, if he gets back to that form for ten million bucks, what a steal that would be for Rams football over here, and we'll be in good shape as a playoff team if he's able to perform in tandem with D. Will that's back. So, I mean, shoot, I hope things continue to go well with him. And, again, based off Sean's comments, things are turning in the right direction. And I guess that's all you can hope for at this point of the offseason, huh? Yeah, there was a, there was an article out. I guess ESPN did it. I, I don't want to drop, but I, I read it today that um, they ranked the uh, they ranked the starting um, rosters for the, uh, you know, for the uh, all 32 teams. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the Rams they rank they rank 14th. So um Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'll you know, I'll take that. Again, it is it is based off like, hey, how does Cam Curl perform, right? An underrated, unknown player who the film is pretty good. You know, Trey White, oh, he's injured. D Will, people just don't know about him, even though he, in PFF, if anyone cares about that, he's been top five the last like two, three years in every stat in that. I, you know, so I you know, it's a preseason time. People just talking nonsense and yeah, 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 yeah right. Making, making, their, making their content. But yeah. Any a, other, I get, any other uh, health uh, injury updates, Mark? No, I do not. But I do have a question. Has anybody, does anybody have a clue where Quentin Lake is going to end up in this defense? Do we know that yet? I certainly well, don't. You know what? I don't have a hundred percent, but based off the kind of the, the things I hear, I mean, Quentin Lake has, they're pushing the Rams organization is pushing him to be a captain and a face of the franchise guy. You see him on the NFL network doing stuff. You see him doing all the fashion stuff with the Rams, you know, the Rams collab with a lot of different, you know, uh, boutique and high end clothing brands that do these expensive Rams apparel. They always have Quentin Lake modeling. I want to say his uh, his girlfriend, his wife, fiance. Pardon me if anyone in those families are listening. And I just don't know what what the relationship exactly is, but I think she models. So then Quinn's absorbed in that. Rams are just pushing everything about Quinn, like modeling, captain, talk of the Rams on all the networks, and he's a good player. He played in that big nickel slash star role, depending on the team right. we we're playing. Um, but it seems like he's going to play traditional up top safety this season. Yeah. It, that's it, what I was it, thinking. Yeah. It seems like based off his comments, talking about that big nickel star that he did what he was asked, but he would rather play like in a, in a, in a smooth way of saying, I didn't like that, but I did it because that's what the coaches asked me to do <laughs> type thing. Yeah. And so based, and real quick, and based off the reports of Russ East and Darion Kendrick getting a lot of snaps at the star, big nickel, I mean, that in tandem with his comments, it seems like Quinn's going to play up top safety with Cam Yeah, Curl. well, a lot of that could roll back into Trey White. Now, if, if Trey White yeah. can go as a, as a number one corner, yeah. okay, everything falls into place. If he can't, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of dominoes could fall. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. To see. And they yeah. got some flexibility, though. They got, they got some guys with some experience. Um, but, uh, yeah. man, it'd be really... It'd be a really big deal if Trey White is ready to go game one. And real quick, gentlemen, as you're talking, it just brain blasted to me. Um, the only player who liked the star was Jalen Ramsey. But nobody else has enjoyed playing the star in, in our Rams defensive scheme. Think about it. We all wanted Kobe Durant because he was smaller, quicker dude. He was vocal. You know, again, you get a read between the lines. He did not enjoy playing the big nickel star. Uh, Quinn Lake, read between the lines, he did not enjoy playing the big nickel star. Uh, who else was in that role? I, I'm just blanking on. I mean, those are the two guys that we thought of the most in the last couple of years. But Jalen was like, I want to play that. Yes, yes, yes. I hate playing outside. It's boring. Even though he was Deion Sandering, Darrell Rivas shutting down receivers, right, in the, that 2020 campaign. Uh, no one else has enjoyed it. And I get it. It's a lot of responsibility because think about it, guys. And everybody listening, if you are an outside corner, you are benefiting from the receiver only being able to run his routes straight ahead and pretty much inside, right? If you're guarding somebody from more inside the offense information, the slot or the tight end spot, they have the entire field to work. And that's just more 
stress on you as a defender, the big nickel, the star defender, having to guard the whole field instead of maybe, you know, 60% like you would be playing on the outside, a la old school Jalen Ramsey, a Trey or D Will that we'll have in the scheme. So I get it why players are like, mm, I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> it's a lot of yeah. responsibility. But luckily, Russ East played really good at the dime linebacker spot where he's substituting Roseboom to play next to Ernest. So he's used to being having to be able to guard that middle of the field and outward. So hopefully, hopefully he can claim the job and then we'll see maybe maybe a Cam Kitchen, you know, Cameron Kitchens maybe plays that dime linebacker spot, which I wouldn't mind either. So we'll see how it's going to play out. But I, do, I know I made that longer than what it should have been. Apologies. But Quinlan's going to be up top. That's what it feels like. Yeah, it'll be interesting because I think Curl is likes it up there, and Kitchens is definitely a, a definitely an up top guy, right? I mean, he's a ball hawk. He's like, that's what we're hoping for out of yeah. him. So yeah, it'll be interesting though to see how it all pans out. There's certainly a lot of bodies there. Um, there's no shortage of young, athletic, you know, a little bit of experience with Curl, but uh, but that's about where it ends for the safety crew in terms of experience. So, yeah, yeah, a lot of options there. So yeah. uh, Mark. Um, why don't you take us through the uh, proud lineage of Rams quarterback wives that <laughs> are uh, just so <laughs> prominent in, uh, in uh, you know, getting quotes out there. Yeah, I, I'm probably not going to get the details on uh, Vince Ferragamo's wife. I don't even remember her name, but I, I, if I remember correctly, she had a little bit to do with him ending up in Canada, as I remember it. Um, and then you go to Kurt Warner, and Brenda Warner was not very popular, being a little more vocal, I think, about certain things. And, you know, a lot of people are just averse to, you know, um, wives, period, speaking up. And I don't really blame them. It's, you know, they, they're uh, attached to a very prominent athlete. And, yeah, I guess we'd all wish they just zipped it. But hey, uh, you know, there it's uh, I, I don't I never had a real issue with either one of them. I really didn't. Um, and then and I don't I don't have as big an issue with Georgia Frontieri as, as most Ram fans, apparently, either. And then you get to, uh, you know, Kelly Stafford. And I don't know what your guys take on this is. And I did not do a deep dive. I just read the headlines on this. And if I understood correctly, she probably said something on this podcast that would have been better left uh, unsaid. But, uh, you know, we just got to learn to laugh about it a little bit. What I want to know is, is this news to Matthew? Uh, and, uh, and the way not. it was, yeah, for, for <laughs> those of you who are, uh, my understanding is she said that she dated, the word she used, I understand is dated, the backup quarterback to make him jealous. And I don't, I don't, I, think that's a big deal you can take that a lot of ways what does dated mean and you know we're talking about college kids you know right, back at georgia right yeah yeah, yeah yeah right so i don't know maybe you guys disagree with me but i i thought it was almost funny and i wonder what that conversation in the stafford house was that night uh i imagine matthew would probably prefer that she didn't you know share that information but yeah to my understanding it was like hey like they were on and off dating like, you know, Stafford was, you know, you know, all American quarterback, didn't want to be in a relationship really with uh, with his now wife. And I guess, you know, that was her way of pushing him to really want to be with her. Right. You get a little jealousy in there. Oh, you see me with another guy. You right. don't like that too much. Right. So it's one of those, you know, deep mind game tactics that I know some women like to play out there. The deep, long game, the, the mental. <laughs> they like to attack. And uh, look it in terms of. Of like, should that have been said? It, it, you know, I just wish that, you know, uh, Kelly's a nice woman. You know, I I, have, I know people that have that have you know had conversations with her. They've seen her in the LA area, and I've ran into her. And uh, she, look at man, she's probably a, a fantastic you know woman and mother and all that fun stuff. But she's got to understand that her words carry a lot of weight because Matthew Stafford doesn't say Jack Tilly squat ever, other than press conferences and uh, you know NFL film stuff or our own Rams productions, right? So because our star, you know, Hall of Fame level quarterback doesn't say much unless you force him to, we try to pick, you know, the media and the football world takes what Kelly says and they follow her much more closely. So Miss uh, Miss Stafford, Miss Kelly Stafford, if you happen to be tuning in or anyone who knows her, I would say, hey, look it, we appreciate your fandom, but 
let's just save whatever you have to say until after Matthew Stafford's retired. Because I think every offseason since you've been with us, there's been something from your podcast or another where the NFL community, not just Rams community, have blown it up severely where now we have to talk about it and address it here. <laughs> okay. So yeah. uh, it was insane. I mean, we got ESPN talking about it. We have all the other, the biggest football podcasts talking about it. We have Hall of Fame retired players chiming in. I mean, golly, just like oh, last year, it was like, Matthew Stafford isn't getting along with his young teammates and how that got blown up on all the same thing, all the podcasts, all the networks. It's like, Miss Stafford, realize your words carry a lot of weight. Just wait until the man is retired to talk about negative things. <laughs> please. please. I, did, I didn't realize it had blown up that much. You know, I saw a couple oh, little blurbs about it. it, and, uh, it yeah. That's the only reason why I know about it, because I see – you know, uh, a big network mentioning it. I'm just like, wait, 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 what? And Has then, anybody then, invited uh, the backup quarterback onto their show? I wonder. Maybe we could get him on. <laughs> Maybe we could oh, get him. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah, yeah, we crazy. don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all with this undercurrent of the Playboy Jimmy G being the backup quarterback. Oh, now. of course. Yeah. Oh, of course. That's what they everybody talks of about. Of course. Well, good stuff. Well, a good show, you guys. Um, and uh yeah i think we're out so uh thanks again we'll try and get back uh next week um mm -hmm. actually i'm out next week but uh you guys can uh can get in there but um yeah and uh come back strong i'm going on going down to cabo yeah i'm gonna, try, I'm gonna go try and make some big 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 blockbuster trades that's where the rams do all <laughs> yeah you get on that phone and start making all their, calls do all all their feel it inside you do all their business to see bumping into all those uh all the players down there in the yeah in, in Cabo. But uh well good stuff. Thanks a lot, you guys. Uh it's been Rounds Up Roundtable. Uh host, I'm your host Tom, uh, at Rounds Beat on X, joined by Mark and Ian. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. It's been fun. Gentlemen, football is upon us. And everyone out there, be patient. Games will be here soon, because I know it's driving me crazy Woo. too. <laughs> It's that. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up. Stay safe and have fun out there.